Hi, this is Maggie. We have a question in the Facebook group, so I'm going to just put together a quick little, hopefully a few minute video on how to create a blank space so you're deleting stitches in the middle of an embroidery uh, that a lot of people like to do to put names in. So, first thing you uh, have to do is pick your embroidery, and I'll, I'll use an example with this snowman that I did in our cross stitch module. The chart was from a place called Gathered, gathered.com perhaps. It's a UK site with a lot of craft patterns. Now there's a few different ways. The person asked, how can I split it uh, to sort of have a top and a bottom to put a name in? And I have split designs. Say so you can see over here the little um, one inch. And I do this because when uh, this is going to be a quilted hexagon just for a little coaster. And I like to do the backs as two separate pieces and then stitch them together, leaving an opening. And when I put it on the front, um, I won't have hand stitching along which one edge, and that always shows for me. So whenever I'm doing something where you stitch around the outside, I always um, have it sewn together in the middle. And I did this by simply copying, I'll show you with the other guy, and bringing it up. But when you see them with the names, usually it isn't a split with a name, it's that they took a chunk out. So we'll look at both ways. The easiest way to do it get this guy out of here is in the embroidery module this is open in embroidery and the first thing you want to do since you don't want to mess up your file is click duplicate and get yourself a copy to work in don't work in your original and now I'm clicking window zoom to make it big enough and we'll bring it in a little for you when you go over to the Modify tab, you have choices. And now I, for a simple line, I like the box select. And if you wanted um, to just cut and move, you just box select. And the easiest way to do it, I find, sometimes if I copy and paste, it comes in the same place, I cut it out because you see these little stitches, it's easier to move them. I go back to the first tab, so it will, doing it this way, it will paste in as its own individual here in the film strip. You can watch and see now I can move them separately. Now what I wanna show you is that if I go to modify, oops, I have to select him. I've put him back, I've started with a new file and put him back together because once you've done a few things, it, it can be hard to um, undo back. So if I take him here and I cut again, and I didn't show you last time, you can cut this way. The reason you didn't see it before is I use my command keys and command X is cut. If I cut him here and I paste him back in, he comes in the same spot. But he's all one design. See, when I go back to the home tab here, that he's not one design, and it isn't as easy to move around the pieces. So when I'm working here, and I cut him, it's Command X, or any time I, I do a command, you can um, do your double click. And I come back, and I paste him here, he comes in as two separate pieces, and it's easier to handle um, these stitches that might be going back and forth in between. So if I collect this one and you have those stitches, what you want to do is select that, that you can just move the stitches and click on them and kind of bring them down so they're not in the way. And Notice here I've clicked on your little select tool. This doesn't always show you exactly what it is, but this is the one that's going to let you, this little zigzag thing, select stitches. 
and then you can move these bits that are a, that would basically be a jump stitch. Okay, so this is how you move the pieces and move them back and forth. Now, depending on the design, maybe if you put a name in here, it would look okay. So I'm gonna show you both ways to do it because you can um, play it out. The thing you would want to do, and this you would do in both cases, if you are putting a satin line across and you would get these, um, see these little stitches here? You'd actually bring these all the way down. Um, I wanted this video to be short and not show you how to move all the stitches, but you just saw how to move them and when you're in the Modify tab, you have to select the design. You can zoom right in to really bring your stitches down where you need to and you do your select stitches and you could just bring it right down. Okay, so we're not gonna spend time with that bit. When you have the two pieces, the easiest way to create a satin line is in digitizing. Now, I don't like to bring my designs into digitizing if I don't have to, and this is designs that I've purchased, or say this cross stitch. If I insert this cross stitch, it might come back with some pieces as a double stitch and some pieces as a satin column, and it does weird things to it. So if I, exported the, there's two ways to do it, and the simplest way is to do Command L and figure how long do you want your line. Do you want it to overlap a little bit? So you want them to be about two, three, seven, four, or you could count if you have your grid set, I could say one, two, three, four, five, six, because this is a 10 millimeter grid, and I could go into, see this is now digitizing, and I can say I just want a simple line, which is create, get rid of your fill, choose a satin line, set how you want your satin line. Four millimeter is about okay. Do you want the flat ends? Do you want pointy ends? Let's say we're going to do pointy ends. I notice on most of the designs, they do have flat. I just want to show you, you can change your ends. And your density is fine. And you just put point create, and we just wanted one line. That's six of these. Finish. There you have a line, and that actually might be a little fat for my snowman. So maybe I want to come back in properties. Let's bring him down to 2.5. And that looks a little better. It's probably still going to be fat, but this is just showing you what to do. So this is set in line. And I export it. because I didn't just see where I put it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna have to click export again just to see where it went. Uh, okay, it's on the desktop. I have files in a few different places, so we can close that one. Come over here to satin line. Do a command copy. First, you have to select it. I tend to do command A whenever I open them to select it. And command copy. Again, you can use your, your double click, copy. Bring it into the, the file you're working on that's your duplicated copy. Hit paste. Bring them up there. Hit paste again, because you want two lines. Bring it down there. And that's what it looks like when you split him that way. Okay? Now, the other way, and I, I put a few of these snowmen on the 
desktop so I could show you is when you take a chunk out of the middle and it's it's the same thing you've got your design selected so you go to modify and you still want your box select that's the easiest for a rectangle and let's say we're going to put his name and you can use your grids if you know how big of type you want you could actually set your grid to the the type line but these are 10 millimeter so I know I'm using a tiny font, but this is obviously a small design. I could actually say I just want it to be exactly 10 millimeters, so I'm picking the font. I know what I'm doing. I don't want that move part, though. And then I decide where I want the name. I think I want them maybe down there. Whoop, whoop, so I'm still moving. <laughs> you can't select a move. <laughs> or you, what happens is you end up dragging the stitches. I don't want to drag the stitches, so there we go. I like that block. I hit in a Mac, it's FN delete. It can be a delete in the other place. And you'll notice you have all these lines. It didn't come on. When you delete it out, you didn't get the two separate pieces. So now, in order to have the two separate pieces, you have to cut and paste. So Command X, or use your double, come over here, paste. And you'll see doing it this way, you end up with them not connected. All these spurious stitches you didn't want aren't there. And then, you would go ahead and find your line, select it. This is already selected, but do a copy. Paste. Paste again. Cover your edges. And again, this, this design is very tiny, so even these lines look a little thick for it. I'm guessing most people are using it on a bigger design. But there you go. There's how you have a nice clean in the middle um, space in your design. If you have any questions, come into the Facebook group. We're really good about answering questions. Not, we're not online all day. We do have lives, but somebody in the group will get back to you. We have a lot of really knowledgeable people there, and we're happy to share information.